I've had tons of negatives. You know, I've been through bus accidents. I've had, you know, failed interpersonal relationships. I have, you know, not so hot thoughts bounced around my head. I've simply figured out a way that I can use them in a constructive and creative way. You know, I ended up in my mid-twenties and I was living in Savannah, Georgia at the time. And like so many musicians and artists starting out, I was working in, a, in, in the service industry, uh, you know, just sort of bouncing from one restaurant to another. And my attitude was much more focused towards my career as a musician. There was a pivotal moment where I just said, fuck it. I didn't start playing music because I want somebody to tell me what to do. At one second, one second to the next, I, I'm not gonna work for anybody starting now. In order to really figure yourself out, you have to be broke, you have to be poor, and you have to figure out the way that your creative output is going to make sense for you first and foremost, but then how that's going to work in the real world. Touring you know, in a DIY band around the country in the back of an Astro van, you've got to have a lot of irons and a lot of fires. For a couple years, I got by making album covers in exchange for work on my vehicle. I think I was about 23 or 24 when I started this lifelong commitment to overcommitment. Ever since then, I have had more things to do than I can possibly accomplish, and it's been absolute chaos ever since. We crashed August 15th, 2012, when I was cleared to fly, which took nearly two months. I landed in the U.S., told I was going to be in a wheelchair for quite some time. My faith in playing music and remaining in this band it's resolute. There's nothing short of an amputation, which nearly happened, that could have derailed that. We're gonna to tour as soon as we can. We put a tour on the books. Our drummer and bass player left the band with very good reason. You know, they, they had suffered like extreme injuries. We'll find two new members in order that we can play a show. My energy, my stubbornness, my ambition push me in moments of pain. When I should have been resting and relaxing, I was doing whatever I could to fix myself. In those eight months, I was using every ounce of my being to move towards one specific thing. If I could reach that goal, I knew that that would immediately be insufficient, and then I'd have 10 new goals ready to go. When we hit the stage and that first note was played, I already knew we gotta write a record and then we've gotta tour on that record and then we're gonna have to write another record. Everybody's got that goal to work towards. Even through immense adversity, you can get there. There should be no limitations beyond our creative goals. Energy, ambition, and willpower can push a human being through bus accident to performing on a stage in eight months. But it's the great double-edged sword for people like me, you know, sort of neurotic and high energy, uh, and who use that energy as the source of creativity. That stress is what drives me. Those anxieties are the things that fuel the fire inside me that allows me to make things. Sometimes I complain about it. Oh, I'm so busy this week, I can't possibly see my way through to the end of it. it feels like I'm in a panic attack, but you take that away, and I'm, you know, I'm miserable. I don't, I don't know what to do with myself. I certainly don't want to invite more uh, negativity and, and stress chaos into my life than I already have, but neither can I live without it. Through these struggles, I'm able to connect with an audience. In the language of anxiety and, and heartache and despair and torment, we can find ourselves in our audience and our audience can find themselves through our music.